Right guys, welcome back to another Drone Nation video. Well today we're going to learn how to put the version 3.8 firmware onto your 2D module. Alright guys, well I thought we'd better not just get straight onto the computer. Uh, right, so in order to flash your module, which I hope that's focused up, but we'll soon find out when it's in post. So in order to flash that, there's a USB port on the bottom here, which that really isn't focused, give us a minute. Wrong way, there we go. You have a USB port on the base of the module. So what you need to do is you will be plugging it, plugging your USB lead in there and then you plug that into your computer but don't do it yet. What we need to do first is we go on to the internet and we type in Furious FPV firmware. Now once you type that in it will come up with this page uh, and you want to select the top option which will be download Furious FPV. Uh, Furious FPV. So you click on that and then when your internet decides to work, which will be some time today da, 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 da. I know someone used to make that noise so <coughs> uh, you need to do is it'll load into the Furious FPV's web page and it'll bring you into where all the downloads are now scroll down past all of this lot because there's loads of stuff right software you don't need to download anything out of here and then depending on which one of these two you've got, if you've got the True DV1 or 2 or the True DV3, depends on where you're going to be downloading from here. Now you can only do this on the True DV3, whether or not it's the 3.4, 3.5, 3.6, whichever module you want to call it, um, it's essentially the same one. So what you'll be doing is you select this top firmware here, so that one. And like that is for a Mac or if you're a Windows user then you use that then what you need to do once you've figured out which one of them two you want is you click on the little download icon over on the side here so click that that will obviously download the firmware for you and then what I like to do is get the firmware and then cut it and put it into a separate folder so I've just if your desktop's anything like mine where it's got loads of stuff on it, it'll take you all day to find it. So what I tend to do is just create a folder with some stuff in and then obviously bang it in there and then we know where we are. So, you can shut your internet down now, you don't need it. What you need to do now is obviously unzip the folder. So you unzip it to a separate folder which will be this one now. Double click on that and then in here you've got the parts you'll need to be able to flash the firmware on now the new firmware is meant to be a fair bit better than the old one the menu system's changed a little bit but the menus themselves are a lot faster to get through it doesn't hang up or anything like that um, also they've changed part of the algorithm with the way that the, the diversity works and it's meant to well people are comparing it to the Clearview type stuff and it's it's not far off to be fair from the videos I've seen I haven't actually tested my module as of yet but I'll be doing a follow up video later on This the whole point of this video is just to show you how to put the firmware on this isn't a release candidate this is the final finalised version as well the finalised version came out a couple of days ago I, so I've obviously put it on and made sure everything works and it does up to now uh, so anyway cut all the bullshit out this top one is the drivers that you'll need in order to be able to flash it on now if you've already got beta flight, race flight and so on and so on then this driver you already have on your computer but if you connect it in and it doesn't recognise it it's because you need to install this driver then you have the X-Loader, now the X-Loader is the software that you will need to flash the module so what you do is you'll click on the X-Loader folder and then click on this bottom option which says X-Loader click that and bring up this little box now what you then need to do is you get your USB lead and you get your module and you put your USB lead in your module and it'll load up like that so as you can see that's the, the newer version uh, right anyway 
so what you then do is you need to make sure that your device is set to nano art mel 328 well art mega sorry 328 whichever com port your pc has issued to the module just leave that as it is and leave your board rate at 57600 the top portion here what you need to do is you click on this little box at the side and then that will then take you to find the software, find the firmware so wherever we put that which was in one label keyboard so you go into the where you've put your software open up the folder and then the bottom option which was in this folder and it said true d3.8 that's your software or the firmware for the module so what you need to do now is you will click true d3.8 click ok and then that will then know that that's the firmware that goes on to the module if you click upload it will say upload in there in the corner and then your module will stay on and do its own little thing for a moment and then once they once it's the upload is finished your module will turn off and come back on again there you go so that's now got the 3.8 software on it or firmware once you've done this now because I've already done mine I'll have to recalibrate it in a moment but let me just clear that up for you so you can see so when you initially flash it it'll start saying calibrate now you'll need to turn a quad on or a VTX of some description anyway set it to 25 milliwatts and put it around about 6 to 8 feet away from where you're sitting um, and then you will hit the calibration button which will I was saying it'll be shouting at you to calibrate it anyway but what you need to do is go to calibrate and then obviously you just go through the calibration settings it'll calibrate itself and then once that's done you're all good you can just bang it in and go flying um, some of the stuff that they've changed you can obviously put your name and stuff in it which hasn't changed really uh, the filters that's for how fast everything or how fast the diversity happens between the antennas uh, and yeah I'll just give you a quick overview through the menu so you've got band scanner so obviously go through the whole band to see if there's anything I haven't got any quads turned on so it's not going to recognise anything at the moment but obviously if you did have a quad turned on it would be checking to search all the bands and find everything for you uh, you've got smart search so that will obviously run through every single channel and everything to well every single channel and every single band to try and find the best signal for you uh, you obviously have all channels and then you set it keeps your favourites set at the bottom so I have all my race band channels set as favourites so I can just zip between them all makes life easier when you're out on the field uh, and then what else have we got and then you've got your save channels exit quad finder this is a new thing that they've put in um, <clears throat> if you lose your quad in a field it's a pain in the backside trying to find it so they've now put this into this firmware so you can go into quad finder click OK and then you set whatever channel you're on obviously depending on what channel you're on so I normally fly race 7 so then what it would start doing is when you have this connected to your goggles and you turn your goggles and take your antennas off and point it at something or you you have a patch antenna on then that's obviously directional so you can use this feature in order to be able to find your quad when you've lost it uh, and yeah that's about it really but as you can see the menus are a lot quicker uh, and then if you want to switch between channels it's obviously a lot faster as well it doesn't hang up anymore so hope that was helpful uh, leave us a comment down the bottom let me know if it's helped you out and thanks very much for watching and I will see you all again soon cheers guys bye